Let's go explore Aleppo. Our first stop of the day is an historic museum that has suffered as a result of the war. Everything here comes from Syria, nothing borrowed from other countries, including these crazy looking statues. You'll see all sorts of artifacts and even a well intact skeleton. Then a security guard told us to stop filming. such a treat that I have a doctoral candidate in archaeology that's explaining all of this to me. Pretty strict photos once you got out of the first little exhibit there and unfortunately just like a lot of other things here uh, the war has made this museum uh, kind of run down. It didn't get any damage per se but a lot of the maintenance that they need has kind of gone to the wayside. So they had one wing that was open it was really nice to be able to see that. A short drive away is the oldest souk in the world. It was heavily damaged during the war, but now we get the privilege of seeing it rebuilt and coming back to its original splendor. We happened to visit on a Saturday morning, one of the only times it's ever closed. Just a few shops are open. We made our way to the older part for a quick look. and tried to visit a soap making house, but the owner was sick, so he went to a shop in another part of town, bearing witness to some of the atrocities of wars and earthquakes. You could say this shop takes soap seriously. So many different scents to choose from and nearly all made with olive oil. Mm, there's a really nice smell to it. My favorites, pine and honey. Right here is the world record largest bar of soap, 1,520 kilograms. I picked up some soap as souvenirs for some friends. Fun little souvenir to give them. It's all stamped with a Aleppo soap on it, so that's pretty cool. After a quick lunch, we spent the next few hours exploring the large citadel of Aleppo. As you go through the doors with all the horseshoes on it, legend has it that if you spot the upside down horseshoe and touch it, you are good and meant to pass through the gates. Very slippery footing here. There are some extremely narrow corridors to navigate as you visit very dark jail cells. They are so foreboding I couldn't bring myself to go down. Let's check out the palace. Welcome to the palace throne. With quite a view of the city. Look at this absolutely beautiful chair with all the same stuff that my new box is made out of. I'm in love with that ceiling. It is so detailed, so ornate, gorgeous. The throne room even had a secret escape in the event of an attack. And special holes that you could pour hot oil through onto would-be attackers. But my favorite part was this glimpse into an area that is so uncommonly visited. Even my guide had said she'd never been to this part of the citadel before. This is the bath? Yeah. Oh wow. Ah. This is the hot water bathing area with rudimentary plumbing and skylights. Warm water pipes going through here. Early style plumbing. I really am lucky because we're being taken to places that are almost always closed. My guide has never even seen some of the places that these guys are taking us to. So again, how fortunate. The Citadel is definitely worth spending some time at. Really enjoyed it here. We were hoping to get to see another complex of unique churches, but sadly that didn't happen either as they were all closed today. Oh well. <laughs> we went back for an early supper to the Citadel and found a brush fire had started. We were literally just here. Uh, 
let's get back to supper, which was one of my favorite meals of the trip. Wow, look at that. This is the small. Jeez. This eggplant is cooked perfectly. It has a little bit of an artichoke uh, taste to it, which is good because I love artichoke. But this is perfectly, perfectly cooked, and there's a little bit of uh, ground lamb with it too that pairs perfectly with the way this was prepared. This is the best meal I've had in Syria so far. I really need to stop saying that. Syria is a foodie heaven. Way too much good stuff on the list here. After a break at the hotel, we went out for a unique Middle Eastern experience. Well, I'm trying a first for me here. Sort of a first. I've never smoked a day in my life. Shouldn't smoke, bad for you. But we're gonna be doing shisha. Now, I've tried shisha once about 12 years ago now, my first trip to Dubai. I sucked just a little bit in, it was so hot, I spat it out right away and haven't tried it since. But since we're here in Syria, we are going to give it a try and we're hopefully gonna do it the right way this time. It's fun to sit and watch the show of the shisha preparation. After getting it statted for you, you get your own personalized pipe paint. Thank you. <laughs> I think my face says it all. Oh, yeah, that's good. I'm surprised. You just hold it in your mouth, you don't breathe it in, it's like a cigar. It just gives like all of your sinuses this pleasant lemony taste. This is a far better experience than Dubai. Far, far better. I ended up being a really positive experience. Didn't push it too much. I somewhat suspect I'm going to have a kind of a sore throat, maybe some irritated sinuses tomorrow, but uh, yeah, I might be rethinking shisha. I don't know that I want to do it regularly, but if I'm in the Middle East, you know, it's a little cultural thing. That's a wrap for today. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you in the next one.